Welcome to New Zealand. Your second time here? Uh, second time here. Yep. I was here for 11 days last year. You feel a bit weird being so hot in the, in the wrong month? It is a little odd, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's easy to get used to, too. <laughs> hey, um, why has your book been so, so well received? Why well, has it been number one for so long yeah. and uh, potentially would still be in the charts if, if there wasn't politics going on today? What resonates about it? A um, couple things right off the top. One is, I think it gave people a language to have a conversation about God that was not a religious conversation. It, and so, when people have read it, suddenly they've got a way to talk to people they care about, about things that actually matter on a spiritual level. And, uh, and it's not religious, it's relational in nature. And for a lot of us, that was a huge surprise, right? And the other thing that I think it did is that um, it gave people permission to talk about their great sadness, you know, the things in their lives that had happened that had this lingering result. And a lot of times nobody has told each other their own stories. I mean, I, so many families came up and said, it's the first time we've talked to each other because we finally had a way to do it. It would, I would assume that this is a love-hate relationship with this book. Uh, I obviously, like many people, struggle at the start, feel great at the end. I know people who put the book down after the first chapter or two. Uh, I know someone who got to the imagery of God being a, a black woman, stopped there, couldn't go on. Yep. I wouldn't suspect there'd be many, can I use the phrase, lukewarm people about this. You'll either love it yeah. or it will be the worst book in the world. Would that be a, a fair statement? Or a, at least a highly suspect. You know, <laughs> my mum was one of those that when Papa came through the door, she shut the book, you know, book, called my sister and said, your brother is a heretic. <laughs> you know, so, so it's... It definitely had a way of stirring up the conversation, which is really one of the most beautiful things about it, right? Because even angry people, at least they're involved in the conversation. Now, some of the angriest people didn't read it, but, they, you know, that, that's kind of par for the course, too. But when somebody's mad, at least they're involved in the conversation, right? So when people are upset and they come to me about it, I don't take it personally because I already know who I am, right? So they're coming to tell me about them. And if I can hear it, I know that the possibility of a conversation might exist. If I'm all defensive and stuff, it's not going to happen. I know it's the number two book of all times in Brazil. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm wondering, though, here in New Zealand, we have a pretty horrific rate of child abuse. And I would imagine that your book would resonate with different people on different levels for different reasons. Very much so. How have you found it's been received in New Zealand? Does that come through in our culture? Have you witnessed the, the stats around child abuse and the horrific crimes about children being killed in this country? Yeah. Is that something that comes through in, when you chat to Kiwis? Absolutely. Uh, and it, you know what? I, I wish it was, not that I would wish it on the Kiwis, but I, I wish it was just a New Zealand problem, right? This is a global problem. And so is uh, gender inequality, which I think underlies so much of all this abuse. So, uh, yeah, but it does. And another thing that happens here as well is that uh, a lot of people have some sort of a religious, pretty... Uh, boxy type of history. Do you think God looks like Gandalf, for example? Yeah, yeah. especially here with Lord yes, of the Rings. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, not a dwarf, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, there is some of that that comes to the forefront. But you know what? The thing about it is, is that we live in a world that brings to us great sadness. If 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 we haven't done it to ourselves or perpetrated it on somebody else, we're going to live in a world that we're going to have to deal with death and we're going to have to deal with loss and we're going to have to deal with abuse and all of those kinds of things. The book just gave uh, a space for people to have that conversation. So it comes up everywhere. Well, I should probably have introduced uh, what we're doing here a bit more. I, I'm running a, a show called Elephant TV where we talk about big questions. We talk yeah, about yeah. the big issues in the room and we get yeah. perspectives from all parts. We've got a little little swag bag there for you, a little Thank Elephant you. TV swag bag, which that. actually includes a little USB drive uh, bracelet, which has got an episode of, on it on same-sex marriage. But what I want to know from you, because I guess it would be different for each people, is what big questions is this book actually asking? Boy, you know, the shack actually asked a lot of the questions that I had growing up inside the church that you weren't allowed to ask. You know, like, for example, if men are so much more messed up than women, how come they're in charge, Right. There's one you're not allowed to ask. So, um, so both, you know, and that's a great question because I'm a person who explores questions. I don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to get you from point A to some kind of... You're not, you're not trying to... Our, our tagline is, not, we're not trying to convert you, we're trying to educate you. 
Uh, it's not even educate. I want, I want there to be a big enough space that you can ask your own questions because I think your questions actually matter and you are even more important than your questions. So let's create some space here to ask the questions. So the books, the books I write, they're full of questions and they don't answer the, you know, a lot of them uh, because there's an ambiguity to relationship and there's an ambiguity to life. But some of the big questions is, if there is a God, is God good all the time? There is a big question. You know, or is he part good part of the time and then, you know, you can't trust him really. And, uh, and then where does the church play? For those of us who come from a church and religious background, there's a whole set of questions that we're involved in inside of this. And then how does this relate to, you know, what Jesus did in the incarnation and who is Jesus? Those are big questions because you're going to come back to Jesus at some point anyway. Sounds like a good place to finish all through the sake. Paul Young, thanks for joining us. Uh, my pleasure and honored to do so.